Good afternoon and welcome to NASA's Johnson Space Center. We were here today for the Expedition 6061 Crew News Conference. We've got a great group of astronauts here to talk with you about the mission that they are getting trained for right now. They're launching on July 20th, the uh, 50th anniversary of uh, the first moon landing. So they've got some good uh, some good ties there and lots to do on their own mission. Um, here today with us we have NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan, who is going on his first space flight and will actually be staying behind for a few extra months after the other two leave. Um, on his uh, right side, Luca Parmitano from ESA, European Space Agency. He's going on his second space flight. He already has 166 days in space from Expedition 3536 in 2013. And then... 36, 36, 37, sorry. Um, and then on his ride, we have Alexander Sforzov from Roscosmos. He is going on his third space flight. He already has 345 days in space under his belt so far and looking to add a few more to those. So we're going to um, let them introduce themselves and we're opening up to questions here in the room as well as from uh, reporters on our phone bridge. And if you're watching at home, you can ask your own questions on social media using the hashtag AskNASA. But first, we'll hear a little bit from the crew. So Drew, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thank you, Brandy. As Brandy mentioned, um, this is my first space flight. And I'm ex extremely excited about that, uh, and I'm really excited about doing that with the crew that I have here with me. Uh, Luca and uh, Sasha and I, uh, Alexander have, and I have been training together now for the past 18 months, and they're a, a wonderful crew. And uh, we, uh, I'm lucky enough to go, go along with a crew that's been very experienced uh, now, uh, several space flights between them. And uh, as they mentioned, uh, as Brandy mentioned, I will be staying behind uh, for a few extra months after they leave. And, and luckily, we're also going to be joining a great crew on board. Two of my classmates, uh, Nick and um, Christina, are already on board and we'll be joining them. I'm really looking forward to joining them here in a couple of months. Luca? Well, I'll pick up exactly from where you left off about our training. Um, a lot of people wonder what it's like to train for the second time for an expedition to the space station. And uh, I was happily surprised that it is just as exciting, uh, just as much fun, uh, different crew, different challenges, uh, different uh, way to work together. But uh, it's uh, so much fun to work with this crew. Uh, we were lucky to have time in Baikonur at the Cosmodrome to work and train together with the crew that we're going to meet on orbit, spend some time with them. and. Um, uh, the most beautiful part, in a way, as being as a, as a veteran, in a way, uh, that uh, the feeling is that the first time I doing the training and you know, getting ready for the space flight was trying to get as much as possible, thinking that it could be a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, this being the second time, I feel a lot more relaxed and uh, I have a biggest, a bigger desire to give. Yeah, if, if you know what I mean, and kind of share the experience, the previous experience, and this experience with my crewmates and the people on the ground. So I'm really looking forward to the uh, completion of the training. Uh, as much as I've been uh, enjoying the training so far, I'm, I'm sure that it's going to be incredibly interesting. And then, of course, uh, to, the, uh, to the expedition and working with my crew. Great. And Alexander? No, I already have to do Третий полет. У нас получается сейчас, когда мы выступали, получилось так, что я невольно подметил, что Эндрю первый, Лука второй, я третий. Ну так хорошо получилось по счету. Но и они уже практически все сказали. Почему? Потому что действительно, вот Лука подчеркнул, что прекрасное отношение в экипаже. Я уже вот могу оценить это за счет того, что мы нашу подготовку, за счет того, что мы уже два раза дублировали экипаж которые сейчас в космосе, они летают. И э, очень интересно было на Байконуре э, подчеркнуть тот момент, что э, мы сидели как дублеры, но мы знали, что мы прилетим к этому экипажу. Вот, э, экипаж Алексея Овчинина, Кристину, к Нике. И э, никаких сомнений в их профессионализме не возникало. И я думаю, что уже у членов комиссии, которые были на Байконуре, точно так же не возникало сомнений по нашей подготовке. И сейчас... 
That is no, correct. Sorry. This is going to be my third flight, and it's actually very interesting because Andrew was the first one to speak, and this is his first flight. Luca was second one to speak, and it's his second flight, and I'm the, th uh, the third to speak, and it's my third flight. It's going to be my third flight. And a lot of right things have already been said, and Luca said that uh, we have a great relationship in our crew, and this is absolutely correct, and uh, we have been backup crew uh, all together twice, actually, and it was a very interesting situation, and Baikon or when uh, we were a backup crew and we were seeing off the prime crew and we already knew that we would join them on board the station. I'm talking about the crew of, of Chinin, Christina, and Nick. And uh, there were no doubts, actually, they're wonderful professionals. And I know that the State Commission uh, members also knew that they are fantastic professionals. No, and now I would like to remind you that the equipment is ready. Взаимопонимание в экипаже. Я наслаждался процессом подготовки вот за этот период. And I would like to underscore that the crew is ready. We have fantastic mutual understanding in our crew, and uh, I had a lot of fun uh, getting tra trained for this flight. Я думаю, что полет будет таким же успешным, как и наша подготовка к Земле. I think that our flight will be as successful as our ground training. However, we'll have to accomplish very serious tasks on board. Seems like it's going to be a fun crew and a lot of fun to watch all in space. Um, we're going to open it up for questions here in the room first, and then we'll take some from the uh, phone bridge as well. If you are on the phone bridge, you can ask your question by pressing star one. And if your question gets answered, you can uh, press star two to withdraw it, and we'll watch for those. But first, let's start here in the room. And uh, keep in mind that you can ask questions on social media using the hashtag AskNASA. Okay, let's go over here to Mark Rowe. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mark Carreau with the Aviation Week and Space Technology. And my question is for um, Andrew Morgan. What are some of the commercial uh, crew milestones that you're prepared to deal with during your stay? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, I, I feel like very fortunate in the uh, increments that we're going to be flying in because uh, we absolutely expect to see some of the U.S. crew vehicles visit us while we're on board, which is a really exciting time. Uh, it's uh, important for our country, but it's really important for the ISS program to have a uh, other ways to get crew on board the ISS, and I, I think we'll, uh, we very much expect to see that happen during our time on board. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Uh, as it stands now, you'll be launching on the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing. Uh, 50 years later, from a Russian pad, an American and an Italian astronaut launching together with a Russian cosmonaut. I wonder if all three of you can sort of reflect on the change from what was a space race 50 years ago to now being cooperation in, in space and what that milestone represents? Yeah, never mind. Oh, yeah that, that's a great question. Um, I can't think of a better way to uh, commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing uh, than launching uh, on the anniversary of the Apollo moon landing with an international crew, especially uh, in light of the NASA's uh, reaffirmation that we intend to land crew on the surface of the moon in 2024, and uh, you know the administrators made it very clear that when we pursue that, that will also uh, that will be as part of an international crew. So it's an interesting contrast to the landing 50 years ago, and a great way to commemorate it. I also think that um, uh, me coming from from the European Space Agency, which represents 22 countries. Um, we, we feel as we already are, in a way, uh, an example of cooperation that would have been uh, thought impossible uh, only, only a few decades ago. And uh, right now, in this crew, there is 22 countries represented by the European Space Agency, but uh, also uh, three crew members that happen to be military. Uh, I come from, a, from the military background of the Italian Air Force. Uh, Sansanich uh, Alexander is, uh, is a colonel in uh, the Russian air defense. And uh, uh, Colonel Morgan being uh, in, the, in the American Army, it is, uh, I think we represent an example of what having a common goal of science exploration 
uh, wanting to achieve uh, the next step of technological advance, what we can achieve when uh, we, we put our minds in that direction. Uh, the sense of cooperation and the, the ties between countries that uh, all over the world can, can grow so strong. And uh, I hope that the people can look at us uh, you know, today uh, sitting here as friends uh, and on the 20th of July uh, when initially we'll walk out in our different uniforms and then wearing the same flight suit and spacesuit, people can look at us and say, yeah, we can achieve a lot more by cooperating together than we will ever achieve by competing. And uh, that's, that's my hope and the message I would like to pass. Ну, я хотел бы подчеркнуть еще вот этот процесс дружеских взаимоотношений между нами и вообще между астронавтами и космонавтами, всеми теми, кто стремится в космос, всегда возникают именно очень дружеские хорошие отношения, потому что единая цель и единая задача. И вот подчеркнуть это мне очень понравилось, как получилось в нашем экипаже, когда мы первый раз дублировали на Байконуре мы проезжали мимо такого большого плаката. I would like to underscore the process of friendship, the friendship between us, friendship between astronauts and cosmonauts, because we are all united by one goal, by one main task. And I remember right now one situation uh, when we were uh, the backup crew for the first time. We were at Baikonur, and we saw a huge banner there. И Эндрю uh, предложил остановиться и сделать фотографию, общую фотографию на фоне, ведь у нас же есть очень еще знаменательные события в космосе, происшедшие как дружеские события. Это полет Союза и Аполлона. И мы сделали общую фотографию, и она была помещена. Мы очень надеемся, что это вот просто еще раз покажет те отношения, те, те события, которые происходили в космосе, они великие. И одновременно они очень значимые для того, чтобы мы ценили вот такие партнерские отношения между нашими странами, всеми нашими странами, участниками космической программы. And Andrew asked us to stop right there and to take a photograph of all of us, which we did, of course. And it was a very significant photograph. It has been posted. And I would like to underscore that there were some other events, friendship events in space, uh, for example, Apollo Soyuz program that united nations, united us. And it, see, it shows the level of friendship, uh, trust, and uh, it is a very significant event as well. So such events demonstrate how valuable our cooperation is and how valuable our partnership relations are. I'm talking about uh, space development and space exploration countries. Can I kind of add on to that question? Were, do you feel like the Apollo moon landing, was that part of what inspired you guys to be astronauts? Is that something that captured your imagination early on? I know you weren't necessarily born then, so as a is, was that a factor in it? Well, you know, I, the thing that really strikes me about the landing on the moon is that, uh, you know, while it does go down, it was Americans that made th that giant leap, uh, that the entire world has embraced it as an accomplishment of the entire Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, despite the fact that the American flag was associated with that, we still see it as an international achievement. And, and you know, as we go forward and uh, do this again in the next decade as part of a partnership, this will be the embodiment of that all over again. And it will, and you know, I, I can't wait to participate in it. And, and knowing that, that these guys next to me are going to be part of that, that their programs will be pulled into that, uh, that's very important to me. I agree 100%. Um, somehow, uh, certain events, even though we were not there to uh, as test in, to to see it, to witness it with our own eyes, uh, it, I feel I've seen so many images and uh, talked to so many people that it's almost as if it's a collective memory uh, reflected in in the eyes of all those who actually did see it and passed on to us. Um, did it inspire me? Certainly, uh, it, it did inspire me. It probably will inspire. Uh, people, future generations, even after we go back to the moon. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, I would like to, uh, maybe to,
take up on those uh, on, on those heroes all the time and uh, you know give it, give it a shot myself in the future. Anything to add, Alexander? No, мне вообще повезло, потому что первый полет человека в космос это то событие, которое непосредственно было в жизни в моей жизни моих родителей и в честь Юрия Алексеевича Гагарина назван мой младший брат Юра. I was really lucky because the first flight to space in the history of humanity uh, was something that my parents were able to witness, and that is really important for our family because my younger brother is named right after Yuri Gagarin. His name is Yuri. И полет и высадка на Луну, первый шаг человека на Луну, эти слова, они входят в жизнь каждого человека на Земле. The moon mission and the moon landing, the first steps of a human being on the surface of the moon are so important and they are in the memory and in the hearts of every person on Earth. И очень приятно, что мы, вот эти грандиозные события становятся частью жизни всего нашего человечества. И мы со временем понимаем, насколько это важно работать и делать. Прогресс не стоит на месте, мы идем вперед. И главное, чтобы события, которые позволяли нам двигаться вперед, были положительными. It has become part of life of everyone who is living on planet Earth, and such significant events demonstrate how important it is to go forward, to uh, constantly progress. And I hope we keep developing, we keep going forward. And the most important thing here is that all our developments are in the positive direction, in the good direction. И очень бы хотелось, чтобы в честь тех людей, которые улетают в космос, выполняют свою работу, называли новых мальчиков и девочек, которые рождаются на Земле. Это для них будет прекрасный пример. I believe that it might be a very good tradition to name uh, boys and girls who are born on planet Earth after the people who are the trailblazers who are the first ones in space. I think that will be a very good tradition. Agreed. All right, we'll take some more questions here. I think we've got one in the back. If you'll tell, tell us who, you, who you're with and uh, who your question is for. Lee Tao with an online collaboration community. Uh, Luca, I'd like to start with you. Of all the intense training that you go through, tell me the importance of a sense of humor. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, first of all, <laughs> well, first of all, I hope I have one. Uh, uh, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> I, <laughs> My, uh, my philosophy is that you cannot take yourself seriously unless you can make fun of yourself. Um, we, we can be put under tremendous stress during the training. Uh, and um, in, our, uh, in our daily life on orbit, on the space station, and while training, we are um, at the same time uh, leaders and followers. And, and, and to be able to achieve, uh, to achieve um, a very communal uh, sense of belonging to the crew, having having a sense of humor, being able to lighten up when things get really stressful, I think is essential. Uh, I've been very lucky uh, so far, but I, I I don't think it's luck. I think it's just the way um, astronauts are selected in a way that both in my previous crews and in this crew, uh, there is a very strong sense uh, sense of humor, and we all like to be the butt of the joke. And uh, one of my uh, one of the things that I always say when I brief, when I brief crew, whatever activities we are doing. Uh, yesterday we had a very intense uh, session of emergency training, and I made, I made sure that at the end of the briefing I said, whatever we are doing, no matter where we are, you know, with a gas mask on or an oxygen mask in, in the smoke, uh, trying to clean up a big mess, take five seconds to think what we're doing is really awesome, it's fun, we should be having fun. And I'm sure that this crew is, uh, is really going in the right direction for that, because I'm, I, we really had a lot of fun uh, so far. Uh, Sasha and I have been in several, several simulations in the Soyuz where the, the instructor really did their best to, uh, to give us a hard time and you know, try to kill us <laughs> in a simulation, obviously. And uh, Sasha and I have met several times looked at each other and you know, just give a good laugh to j just, you know, to shrug it off, say, hey, this is a simulation, we're having fun, this is really going well. So uh, it is important, it is important to be able to lighten up and, 
uh, take it with a good spirit. All right, we also have, uh, in addition to the reporters in the room, we have some students and interns. I think we have a question from a student coming up next. Carlos Neville's uh, go to GCA, and how is going to the International Space Station preparing us to go back to the moon? You wanna take that? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I, as a medical doctor, I can tell you that one of the best ways uh, is it becomes a test bed for us to understand better about how the human body works uh, in space. And uh, typically, astronauts stay on board for six months. I'll be on for a little bit longer, and my crewmate, Christina, will be on for almost a full year. And the whole time, we're going to be studying our bodies and how they, re how they react. And in order for us to go further, say, a trip to Mars, which may take as long as several years, then we definitely need to understand how we protect ourselves against radiation. How do we exercise our muscles? How do we keep our health, heart healthy? Um, how do we? Uh, how do we keep from getting bored from the food even? I mean, there are little things like that. You know, how do we sleep? How does our sleep change? All those things we need to understand better as we go further and further and stay longer and longer in space. So by testing that in the inter on the ISS close to the Earth, we can understand it before we go really far from the Earth and it becomes a lot more complicated. So Great Drew, question. So Drew talks from the point of view of uh, uh, medicine, uh, biology, and human physiology. Uh, as, a, as a medical doctor, he's, he has a perfect perspective on that. As a test pilot, I, I can continue that from the point of view of technology. So the first time uh, humankind went to the moon, uh, it was really you know, landing, maybe a couple of days of exploration, uh, everything constrained in a very small spacecraft, and coming back as soon as possible. Now, if you want to do it differently, maybe have an orbital base, maybe have a permanent base on the moon. How do we do that? Uh, how, do we, um, how do we know that the machines that we want to build are going to last? How, how often do we need to change equipment? Uh, is it going to work? We need, we need to prove that, actually. We need to get there with a plan and with uh, things that are already being tested and proved. The space station is also a testbed for that technology. When your generation goes to Mars, it will use the technology that we have developed to go to the moon, and we are going to the moon with the technology that we have developed to live on board the space station. Thank you. All right. We'll take some social media questions. Remember, you can use the hashtag AskNASA to get yours in. And for those on the phone bridge, if you have a question, you can press star one to let us know. Um, first of all, on uh, social media, we have a question from Christy, who wants to know, what are you most looking forward to doing on the space station? What will you miss most here on Earth? I think that's a pretty easy one. I think the thing that I'm going to miss most on Earth is absolutely my family. Um, uh, I, as a military officer, I have spent time away from home as part of military deployments. Um, this is going to be a long one, and it's going to be challenging in different ways. And so by far, that is going to be the biggest challenge. A uh, thing that I'm probably most looking forward to is sharing the experience with people on Earth. Um, I'm up there just as a window for hundreds, thousands of people on the ground who have uh, supported me, continuing to support me, that have educated me, that helped me become the person that I am. And I want to be able to share that through phone calls, through social media, through video downlinks, whatever I can do to, to help convey the, the experience to them. So for me, sharing that experience is going to be the most rewarding thing. And you're going to be up there for about nine months instead of the usual six months. Is there anything different that you're doing to prepare for being away from home so long or for being in space so long? You know, I, I think that the, the incremental difference between six months and nine months, you know, it'll be subtle things. Of course, you know, I'm going to need more food on board, more clothing on board than I uh, would have needed originally. Um, you know, it's going to, for me, it's going to amount to an entire school year. I have four children, and they're all school-aged, ranging from age 15 down to age 8 and I'm going to miss an entire school year. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was flying only six months, I might have missed half of that. So there's an, a little more element of, you know, it's a little, it feels a little more real when you miss an entire school year. Mm -hmm. And so that makes it a, a lot more tangible. But, you know, Christina, she's going to be on board for an entire year. And uh, so, and, you know, one day we're going to ask astronauts to fly for two, two and a half years. And so we are just making incremental steps towards understanding what that's going to be like. 
As the voices of experience, do y'all have anything that uh, you're particularly looking forward to doing again in space? When people ask me uh, what was my favorite thing in orbit, I really have a hard time putting things in ranking. And it would be unfair to myself and to the people I'm talking to because how can you, uh, how can you differentiate uh, between the launch, the arrival, the first TVA that will capturing the first, uh, the first spacecraft, uh, opening up something that came from the ground that is a great memory, um, getting ready for a very exciting experiment, or um, you know, seeing your friends after uh, after launch. It, it it would be unfair to put them in ranking. So, my the best answer I can give about what I'm looking forward to uh, about being in orbit is becoming a spaceman, living on the space station, being becoming part of this program and getting adjusted to life in a in an environment that's so so different, and and then it envelops all these things. Every day, the most menial experience becomes so magnified because of living it in an environment that's extraordinary. And as far as, uh, um, you know, what, uh, what are we going to miss? Uh, other than good Italian coffee, I would say that uh, that's a joke. Uh, the, uh, um, I heard that this, the espresso machine is down on the space station, so I will miss that. But certainly, certainly the human touch uh, being away from from your from my daughters, being away from my family, from my friends, uh, it it becomes su such such an impact on um, on on our mood and um, on our understanding of who we are and why we do it. At the same time, as a military pilot, just as uh, Drew was saying, um, being deployed, I understand that there are uh, colleagues of mine and. Uh, um, and all over the world, there are people that are deployed in uh, in places that are much harsher. Uh, they they are there because they believe in a cause. They are there because they have to. Um, sometimes they haven't asked to. Uh, they they don't have as many facilities as we do to communicate with their family and friends. And so, compared to their sacrifice, my sacrifice is really small, and it's something I chose to do. So. I try not to dwell on the sacrifice. I, I prefer to think of the privilege and pay the debt in that sense. No, у меня ситуация такая, что как бы я считаю, что количество полетов переходит в качество. For me, the quantity of uh, space flights turns into the quality of space flights. И uh, я оцениваю нашу международную космическую станцию как дом. И я буду делать все для того, чтобы сохранить этот дом в хорошем порядке, в хорошей кондиции. In my opinion, our space station is our home, and I will do my best to keep it in good shape, in good condition. И надеюсь, что вот ну тот опыт, который я уже приобрел, он мне поможет сделать это, может быть, с меньшими усилиями, но с высоким качеством. And the experience that I already have, I hope, will help me perform all these tasks with less time, but more efficiently. In my spare time, I hope I'll be able to do my most favoring thing uh, on orbit is to look at our beautiful Earth to make sure how beautiful it is from space. And maybe I'll take a video camera, a photo camera, and I will take, uh, be taking pictures uh, that will never be repeated. So each picture is unique. И самые приятные моменты, которые можно запечатлеть, потом просто поделиться показать на земле, поделиться со своими uh, членами экипажа и сказать, посмотрите, как это красиво, потому что это они делятся с нами, мы делимся, я и говорю, о членах экипажа. А uh, все мои родственники, друзья радуются за меня и действительно видят, какая красивая земля с космоса. And the most memorable moments for us will be the times when we are going to be sharing all these photographs, our memories, our experiences with each other. I'm talking about my crew right now. And my family, my friends on Earth will be able to see how beautiful our Earth is. 
We actually have a question on social media specifically for you, Alexander. They want to know, after more than 300 days in space already, does it start to feel routine? В определенной степени, да, те эмоции, вот первые эмоции первого полета, они неповторимы. To some extent, yes, because you can't repeat the emotions and the feelings of the first flight. Но и нет такого опыта, когда ты летишь и все делаешь первый раз. And when you fly for the first time, you don't have that experience that helps you later. И сейчас получается, что да, уже может быть нет такого эмоционального, но эмоциональной составляющей полета, но зато ты начинаешь подмечать более профессионально какие-то нюансы. So maybe you don't have as many emotions as during the first flight, but from the professional standpoint, you start noticing a lot of things that you didn't see before. Поэтому здесь все так, ну, понимаете, сам полет это прекрасно. Ты к нему идешь, тренируешься, и когда прекрасные члены экипажа, хорошее состояние станции, хорошее настроение. Получается, что результат просто потрясающий. И потом со временем, когда ты смотришь назад, ты оглядываешься, понимаешь, что все задачи выполнены. Это здорово. Space flight in general is a wonderful thing, and uh, you train for it, and especially when you have a great crew, when the station is in great condition, uh, when uh, you're in a good mood, you look back and you understand that everything was simply amazing, and these are wonderful feelings. All right, I think we have another question here in the room. Hi, Sophie Sanchez with Chicago Now. Um, I have a question about some EVA training. So Andrew, I've noticed that you've shared a lot of EVA training that you've gone through um, on Twitter, namely um, time in the NBL, hours spent in a vacuum chamber, some VR um, simulations, and then even um, I saw an Argos demonstration. Um, my question for you is how has that prepared you for you know, a possible first spacewalk? And then for Luca and Alex, how has the, the new training um, that you know, JSC and NASA is providing helped you prepare for any possible space box that you guys might have? Well, I really look forward to being able to compare my first spacewalk with the, the training that I have. But I know from my experience, crewmates, that, uh, that the preparation is extremely, extremely well done. It's as high fidelity as we can make it. But the, the combination of doing training in, in Argos is just the uh, suspended method versus uh, in the uh, swimming pool in the neutral buoyancy laboratory and using virtual reality gives kind of the whole complete picture of what that training is, is like because it's extremely dangerous, uh, no doubt about it. It's one of the, the most dangerous thing that we do, certainly while we're on board. And uh, we want to make sure that we're well prepared. And so we spend a very large proportion of our training time specifically for preparing for spacewalks. And uh, we definitely, uh, among our crew, Luca and I, as well as the crew that will join, uh, to include our colleagues in the Russian segment, uh, multiple spacewalks probably uh, will occur during our, our time on board. And so it makes sense to spend a lot of time preparing for that. From my point of view and answering specifically your question, the, the training that we receive is outstanding. I, it's the, I put it as simply as I, as I can. Um, and the reason why I know that and I can testify to that is that the first time I uh, came out of the, of the airlock, uh, as EV2, uh, on July 9, 2013, um, I came feet, feet first, and then I, well, I popped out, and I see Earth be underneath me. And usually we have a time in our timeline uh, that's called spacewalking adaptation. It's so that you can, you know, maneuver yourself, trying to understand how the spacesuit behaves and get acquainted with being outside the space station in orbit and, and then go on with your tasks. I felt so confident coming out. I felt like I was right where I needed to be. I, it felt like I'd done that a hundred times. Um, it, it felt so um, it, it felt so right uh, that I know that the training we received, the combination of 
being underwater in the real spacesuit in Argos, suspended in a spacesuit. Uh, the, EVA, the, the EVR uh, simulations with the robotic arm or the virtual reality, all those things combined uh, give us the perfect tools to feel confident about the tasks that we're going to perform and to feel confident about the environment we're going to be. Uh, we know the space station inside out, and literally we know uh, how, to, how to perform our tasks, how to move around the, uh, the, the space station. And in case of emergency, we know how to react, and uh, um, we, we are so sure that uh, our crewmates are 100% prepared and ready. So it's it simply outstanding training. And uh, it's uh, really a testament to the training community and to the EVA community how much effort they put into it. All the work that goes into preparing and developing an, uh, an EVA does not go wasted, none of it. No, I wanted to point out that Уже существуют, так сказать, школы выходов в открытый космос, и российская, и американская, и очень полезно брать что-то хорошее и с этой, и с другой школы. Я могу сравнивать, и вот во втором, в первом и втором выходе в 2014 году мне американские астронавты помогали советами по использованию американского оборудования, и это здорово, я это учел. I'd like to add that there are Russian and U.S. Philosophy, philosophies or methodologies on how to perform an EVA. And it is really important to take advantages and see disadvantages in each of these philosophies. I can say that during my first EVA in 2011, USOS astronauts helped me uh, in preparation and they explained me how all their tools worked and it helped. Поскольку некоторое американское оборудование <coughs> адаптировано точ, к нашим скафандрам, и э, когда мы их используем, э, вот э, берешь именно самое положительное, то, что можно, то есть ты, э, как бы, получается, аккумулируешь две школы. Мне это очень нравится, и я уверен, что вот э, это, когда мы все это правильно делаем, это только успех. Some types of USOS uh, equipment is adapted specifically for Russian segment uh, spacesuits. And from my experience, I can say that it's really important to combine the advantages of these both methodologies. And when you do that, I believe that every EVA can be successful. И я сейчас не могу на голове иметь шляпу, и, как Лука сказал, снимает шляпу перед всеми, кто э, работает на Земле и готовит нас к выходу в открытый космос. Но по э, военной привычке я с огромным удовольствием просто поприветствовал и сказал огромное спасибо. Unfortunately, I don't have a hat on my head right now, and just like Lucas said, that he wants to take off his hat in front of everyone who is preparing and training us for spacewalks. But uh, as a former military, I can say thank you very much. I'd like to give a huge handshake to everyone who is training us. Great. All right, we're going to go uh, quickly to the phone bridge now, where I think we have a question waiting from space.com. <laughs> Hi, this is Hanukkah with space.com. Thank you for taking my question. Um, I'm wondering, besides launching into space on the Apollo 11 moon landing anniversary, uh, do you have any other plans to commemorate the Apollo anniversaries while you're at the space station? Uh, so I, we will definitely be on board for uh, the Apollo 11 and the Apollo 12 anniversary. And the uh, National Air and Space Museum have provided me with some patches that I'll be flying from the Apollo 11 and the Apollo 12 missions. And, uh, and I'll definitely be incorporating those into uh, social media tweets at that time. Um, and you probably have already noticed that the Expedition 60 patch, uh, which is on, here behind us uh, right now on the screen, I mean, there are elements of that patch that uh, commemorate the Apollo 11 uh, moon landing by, and there you see if you are familiar with the Apollo 11 patch, bears some resemblance. Uh, rather than the uh, moon in the foreground, we have the Earth in the foreground and the moon in the background, and the L uh, constellation 
for the 50, uh, 50 years, and then the Eagle constellation, uh, just like the Eagle on the Apollo 11 patch. So, you know, the patch designers and the crew came together and really thought this was a great idea, and very similar to the Apollo 11 patch. Of course, there are no names represented on this patch, which was an important element for us as well, uh, that to really embody that sense that this was uh, an accomplishment of the world and not one single country. Mm. All right, I think um, we'll go now to another question from Mark Carreau. Uh, thank you again, uh, Mark Carreau with Aviation Week and Space Technology. And my question is for Luca. Uh, given the drama from your 2013 spacewalk, did you have any hesitation about flying in space again and doing a spacewalk? It seems not, I'm just checking. <laughs> So in, uh, in 2005, I had a pretty serious uh, accident uh, on an airplane uh, where I had a major burst strike and my spacecraft was mostly destroyed and uh, I had to land an emergency. And uh, the next day I was on a different airplane and uh, flew another mission right away. Um, what, does, does that make me uh, special in any way? Uh, not at all. Uh, when, when I had the emergency on, on the space station uh, with um, uh, the failure in the, in, in the EMU, uh, I really, really hoped that they would let me just swap the EMU and go out the next day to finish the job, because I really wanted to finish the job that I had left in, incomplete. And that's because I have the utmost uh, respect and trust in the people that trained me, in the um, engineers that develop our, uh, our, our equipment, and in in my capabilities uh, because, because I've been trained. And so um, I, had, I would have had zero hesitation going out the, the door the next day, and I have zero hesitation going up this time. And actually, I really, really hope to have uh, the opportunity to, um, to perform some, some more EVAs because I have to, I have to say it was uh, challenging and fun at the same time, and it's um, one of those things that make our job interesting, and that's why we do those things. Um, when people ask us about fear, uh, I think most people, most of us agree that, uh, first of all, uh, yes, we, we do feel fear. Uh, uh, bravery doesn't exist without fear. Being fearless, it's, uh, to me, is, um, is only for, uh, for people that don't have a very good understanding uh, of, of the importance of, of life and, uh, and how important it is to preserve it. But, uh, but understanding, understanding danger and uh, uh, confronting it using the tools that you have available, uh, th that's what we do in our, in our world, in the world of, of flight, in the world of uh, space flight, in operational worlds all over. Uh, all, all over. And so uh, I am, I, I'm confident that um, uh, just like uh, my, uh, my crewmates, uh, Alexei and uh, Nick, uh, launched six months after an aborted, uh, Soyuz, uh, an aborted Soyuz launch, and they launched confident that the spacecraft would take them to the space station. I'm, I'm ready to, to, fly, to fly again. I was, I was ready to go out the door, and I'll be ready to go out the door uh, should the uh, opportunity arise. Okay, we're going to take another question from social media now, and uh, then I think if there are any more in the room, we'll wrap up with that. Uh, but the last one from social media is from Mukanda, who is asking, is there any privacy on the space station? <laughs> um, yes, there is, some, <laughs> there is some privacy. We, um, we, we do have the sense sometimes that we live in a, in a Big Brother uh, uh, spacecraft where we have cameras pointing at us most of the time. There is a reason why those cameras are pointed at us. It's not for our pretty faces, but because people on the ground need to have situational awareness of what we're doing uh, so that they can help us, so that they can guide us, uh, so that we can perform the experiments and the tasks that we have to accomplish. But we also have the capability to turn off those cameras or to point them away uh, in order to, uh, to, have, to have some privacy. Obviously, some activities are always going to be private. I'm not going to name them because it's pretty obvious. But uh, we also have our personal uh, crew quarters. <laughs> <laughs> our personal crew quarters. Uh, that um, it, it's our personal space, and it's uh, you know it's all it's always available to us if we need our uh, five minutes of uh, of me time. And uh, um, and so yes, we we have some somewhat some privacy. 
Uh, also, usually we are visible from uh, DPC, the daily planning conference around 7.30 in the morning till the end DPC, uh, so that, um, that, that mandates our working hours. And then in the evening we are on our own and the same for the weekends or uh, holidays. So uh, I would say that um, in general, if we are looking for some privacy, we can, we can get it, we can achieve it. And uh, otherwise there is an operational mandate for that lack of for the lack of privacy. Sure. All right, I think we've got one more question here in the room. Uh, for Andrew, as Michael Galindo with Cosmic Chicago. Uh, for Andrew, uh, as a medical doctor, uh, are there any biomedical experiments you're looking forward to on station that you know about? Yeah, certainly, given my medical background, the, uh, the, the experiments that we're the subject of are the ones that are of uh, greatest interest. There's one, one in particular that's been going on for a couple of years now called fluid shifts, which studies how fluids and blood shift in the body as a result of microgravity. And I'm going to be uh, uh, one of the, probably one of the last subjects as that starts to wrap up. It's a couple years old now, and, uh, and they've got some good data collected. And uh, so that one will be very interesting. I'm also participating in a number of uh, neuroscience experiments that use virtual reality. Um, two ESO ones, one called uh, GRIP, which doesn't involve virtual reality per se, but, uh, but uh, GRIP or GRASP does. Uh, and these look at how the how the brain uh, responds to the absence of gravity. Uh, and, uh, and so it's just going to be a, a lot of interesting studies there to, to take a look at um, what the effects of, or what the, in the absence of uh, gravity, what we can uh, derive from that. So I think those will be the ones that I'll be most interested in. And, so, and my crewmates, you know, just because I'm a medical doctor um, doesn't mean I'm the only one participating. All my crewmates will be participating in those as well. Okay, I don't see any more questions here in the room, so I think we will wrap up there for the day. Thanks so much for joining us. And you're going to want to keep up with these guys as they finish up their training. You can do so on social media. Uh, Andrew is found on Twitter at uh, Astro Drew Morgan, and Luca is there at Astro underscore Luca. I don't think Alexander is on Twitter yet, but you never know, right? <laughs> so we'll wrap up there and have a great afternoon. Thanks for joining us.